Pixels Tudor Trivia. Hi, welcome to this edition of Teasel's Tudor Trivia with me, Claire Ridgeway, author of various Tudor history books and Teasel the Dog. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a video answering the question, what colours did Anne Boleyn like? And I used lists of expenses for fabrics to see what colours Anne chose. And I received quite a few questions on the fabrics mentioned. So Teasel had the idea of us doing a glossary of popular 16th century fabrics used for clothing. She comes up with such good ideas. She's such an intelligent dog. Now, we'll start with linen. Of course, we all know what linen is. It's still a popular fabric today. It's made from fibres of the flax plant and it was used for underwear, which in Tudor times was the smock or shirt. This was the layer that was next to the skin. So it needed to be easy to wash and to dry. It was also used as a lining. Another textile that is familiar to us is wool. Our England was known for its wool and the wool trade was a major part of the English economy in medieval and Tudor times. Wool was used for all sorts of garments, hose and stockings, capes, coats, jerkins, doublets, sleeves, hats and gowns. Now, how about lawn? L-A-W-N. What's lawn? Well, the Tudor tailor, oh, I've got some dog and cat love here. The Tudor tailor explains that lawn was woven from a gossamer fine thread, often transparent, and that it was used by the wealthier classes for things like kerchiefs, ruffs, collars, cuffs, aprons and partlets. Partlets being the bit of fabric that was used here to fill in a low neckline or to cover the neck and shoulders. The next textile is buckram. Buckram was a heavy, coarse fabric of cotton or linen, a bit like canvas, and it was used for linings or if stiffened with paste or glue, it was used to give structure to a garment like a farthingale, uh, you know, one of those hooped uh, garments that was uh, used under skirts to give you the full shape of a skirt, um, or it was used in hats as well. Listed in Amberlynn's expenses were sleeves lined with buckram. Moving on to the next one, silk. By the 14th and 15th centuries, Italy had become famous for its silk and France and England were also known for their silk. As you probably know, silk is a natural protein fibre which is used by certain types of larvae, such as the mulberry silkworm, to make their cocoons. It's woven to create silk fabric and is also used in velvet, satin, damask, sarsnet and taffeta. It was an expensive fabric, so it was worn by the upper classes. And velvet. Now, Rosalie Gilbert on her Medieval Women website describes velvet as a silk fabric with a short, dense pile. And according to the Textile Research Centre, um, in Leiden, uh, their website, the word velvet comes from the Latin word villus, meaning shaggy hair or tuft of hair, and vulgar Latin villatitus or velutus, or more formally velutum, shaggy cloth. Velvet is a type of cloth whereby short loops are worked into a predetermined set of warp or weft threads. For instance, every sixth thread. And these loops are subsequently, but not always, cut to create a raised or piled surface. Italy was known for its silk velvets. And in the 15th century, King Louis XI enticed Italian silk weavers to France. They were also enticed to Spain. And Italian velvets were shipped to England via Antwerp. Velvet was used for all sorts of garments, Teasel spotted another cat, and to edge garments too. It was used in gowns, kirtles, doublets, jerkins, jackets, coats, hose, shoes, and also to make purses and bonnets. 
its use was controlled by the sumptuary laws, so only the higher classes could wear it. Henry VIII ordered Anne Boleyn nightgowns, or what we'd call dressing gowns, of black velvet embroidered with gold thread, lined with black taffeta, and the sleeves lined with buckram. Now, I just mentioned taffeta there. And Rosalie Gilbert describes taffeta as a fabric of a plain glossy silk. And the Tudor Taylor book, which I would highly recommend for anyone interested in Tudor clothes, describes taffeta as plain weave silk with a stiff paper quality. The warp and weft could be the same colour or different colours. And the name came from the Persian tafta, T-A-F-T-A-H. It was used for linings and also for gowns, kirtles, hose, petticoats, stomachers, coats and doublets. Moving on to satin. Rosalie Gilbert describes medieval satin as twilled silk with a glossy, smooth surface with a dull back. The Tudor Taylor book describes it as a twill weave in which the weft threads are not seen on the surface and the vertical warp threads give a rich, glossy sheen. It was used as a lining and also for gowns, kirtles, doublets, jerkins, jackets and coats. And Anne Boleyn had cloaks lined with satin, a satin cloak and satin gowns. One that you might not be familiar with is sarsnet. Rosalie Gilbert describes sarsnet as a medieval thin soft silk with a slight sheen, sometimes shot. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as a fine soft silk fabric used as a lining material and in dressmaking. And the Collins English Dictionary defines it as a fine soft silk fabric formerly from Italy and used for clothing and ribbons. In the 16th century, this lightweight taffeta type fabric tended to be used for lining garments. Anne Boleyn had a black cloth cloak lined with black sarsnet and she ordered white sarsnet to line an orange velvet gown for her daughter Elizabeth. Damask. Rosalie Gilbert describes damask as a rich, patterned, heavy material of silk or linen, which the pattern appears reversed on the back of the fabric. The Tudor tailor explains that the pattern was created by bringing the weft threads to the surface. Damask took its name from Damascus, the trade hub where this fabric was introduced into Europe from China. Damask tended to be used for summer garments, and Anne Boleyn ordered damask for kirtles, gowns, and also for bed covers. Now we move on to the very luxurious cloth of gold or cloth of silver. The Tudor tailor describes cloth of gold or silver as a textile woven with a warp of silk and wefts of silk and or bullion. Gold or silver, real gold and real silver, would be beaten or worked into long strips and then wrapped around the silk weft. The result was a heavy and expensive fabric whose use was controlled by the sumptuary laws and which was used in items like coats, jackets, doublets, gowns, stomachers, kirtles and shoes. Cloth of tinsel or tinsel satin was lighter, unpatterned and cheaper, but was still made from silk and bullion. Anne Boleyn had embroidered cloth of gold sleeves. I mean, they must have looked amazing. Cloth of tissue, like cloth of gold or silver, was a fabric of twisted metal threads. And the Dictionary of English Costume explains that the term could be applied to any woven stuff, especially cloth of gold or silver, or of coloured silk. In Anne Boleyn's expenses, there's a mantle of white cloth of tissue furred with ermine. And in Calais in 1532, Anne and her ladies wore cloth of gold compassed with crimson tinsel satin owned with cloth of silver lying loose and knit with laces of gold. 
at a mask they held in honour of King Francis I. Oh, to have been a fly on the wall at that and to see those amazing costumes. Then another one which is unfamiliar probably to you is kaffir. Anne Boleyn had a russet gown of kaffir and this seems to have been a heavy silk. Merriam-Webster defines it as a rich silk cloth with printed or woven designs popular in the 16th century. And finally, furs. Don't listen to this bit, okay. Some of Anne Boleyn's items were trimmed with furs such as ermine and minerva. But what were these? Well, ermine or ermine was restricted by the sumptuary laws to uh, those classes like royals, nobility, esquires of the body and their wives, the most sort of important people. And it was the white winter fur of the stoat. Powdered ermine, was the fur from the stoat's tail, which showed black spots. Minerva was the fur of the red squirrel, and it could be red or it could be white. Anne Boleyn also had a gown of tawny velvet with black lamb's fur. Lambskin, black or white, was often used for facings and linings. Now I'm going to give you links to my talks on the colours that Anne Boleyn liked so you can find out more about the clothes she wore and also to our Teasel Tudor trivia talks on Tudor clothes so that you know what I'm talking about when I mention the various garments that the Tudors wore. Oh, you're going to sleep now? Yes, yeah, so she said I didn't want to listen to you talking about fur. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Please do subscribe to the channel. You can click round about there. Madge is just hiding over there. Um, you can, of course, hit the bell to be notified as the videos go live, and you can give us a like and leave a comment. We've enjoyed talking today, haven't we? Yes. Yes. You're a good girl, aren't you? Yes. We'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Teasel Studio Trivia.